हेलो स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज आदर्श एंड लेट्स स्टडी अबाउट द नेक्स्ट चैप्टर ऑफ योर केमिस्ट्री दैट इज स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ मैटर नाउ बिफोर गोइंग इन टू डीपर एक्सप्लेनेशन लेट्स गो इन टू इंट्रोडक्शन पार्ट नाउ एज यू ऑल नो दैट एवरी थिंग इन यूनिवर्स वेदर इट इज अर्थ द एयर वी ब्रीद और इवन योर क्लोथ्स ऑल आर मेड अप ऑफ मैटर In previous class, you learned that in scientific term, matter is defined as anything that has mass and occupies some space. Now, John Dalton in nineteenth century named the smallest particle which cannot be broken further as atom. But now we know. that the atom is made of many smaller pieces that is known as sub atomic particles those are protons neutrons and electrons now what do you mean by elements an element is a substance that cannot be broken down into simpler substances and is made of only one kind of atom at present around 117 elements are known and out of them only about 92 of these occur naturally now let's study a little bit about big bang theory now according to big bang theory the universe originated approximately 14 billion years ago from a violent explosion of a very small concentration of matter of extremely high density and temperature now let's study about symbols of elements now as you all know in chemistry instead of writing full and lengthy names of elements certain symbols are used to represent them now jj berzelius introduced the modern naming system of elements in this system some elements are represented by using the first letter of its name for example n is the symbol of nitrogen if two elements begin with the same letter then the second letter is also used but it is written in a smaller red letter for example ni is used for nickel and n is used for nitrogen now both nickel and nitrogen starts with n but you can see the difference that ni is used for nickel and n is used for nitrogen now in many cases you will find the symbols does not match with the name for example fe is used for iron and as we know the spelling of iron is i r o n so its symbol should be i but it is different because these symbols are based on the first letter of the latin name of the elements like ferrum is the latin name of iron so its symbol is fe that is according to the latin name of iron some of the other examples are o is the symbol of oxygen i is the symbol of iodine and h is the symbol of hydrogen now let's study a little bit about properties of elements now elements consist of only one kind of atom it cannot be broken down into a simpler substances by physical or chemical means and it can exist either as atoms or as molecules now what do you understand by compounds a compound is a pure substances formed by the combination of two or more elements in a fixed proportion the property of a compound are different from its constituent elements for example water is a compound but the properties of water are different from its constituent elements which are hydrogen and oxygen 
it means the property of water or the property of H2O will be different from the property of hydrogen and the property of oxygen. Now what do you mean by chemical formula? A chemical formula is a combination of symbols of the elements and subscript number are used to show the composition of a compound. The information provi provided by a chemical formula is different from different compounds is different for different compounds because it depends on the type of compound that the formula represents. Now the next topic is valency. The valency of an element is defined as its combining capacity. In other words, we can say valency is the power of the atom of an element to combine with other atoms. Now pay attention to this point. We take the valency of hydrogen as 1. The valencies of other elements is the number of hydrogen atoms which can combine with or displace by one atom of that element. For example, valency of sodium or Na is 1 because only one hydrogen atom can combine with one atom of sodium. Now, here are some properties of compounds. Compounds consist of atoms of two or more different elements bound together. They can be broken into simpler substances only by chemical means and not by physical means. Properties are different from its component elements and always contain the same ratio of its component atoms. For example, the property of water or H2O is different from the property of hydrogen and oxygen separately. Now, next topic is mixture. What do you understand by mixture? A mixture is obtained when two substances are combined in such a way that no chemical reaction occurs between the components and you can separate them again by physical means and the substances can be mixed in any proportion by weight and mixture retain many of the properties of its components. Now let's study about types of mixture. Now basically there are two types or two kinds of mixture. First is homogeneous mixture. Now the components of homogeneous mixture are not seen easily. When two substances are mixed, it forms a solution. For example, sugar solution is a homogeneous mixture as its components are not seen. Next type of mixture is heterogeneous mixture. Now the components of these mixtures are clearly visible and can be separated by physical means. For example, mixture of sand and salt. Now the last topic is chemical equation. The elements and the compounds react chemically and forms a new product. This is known as chemical reaction. A chemical equation is nothing but the symbolical representation of a chemical reaction. Now let's try to understand with the help of example. For example, Na that is sodium reacts or combines with chlorine that is Cl2 and gives rise to a new product that is sodium chloride. So here the elements or the compounds that take part in a chemical reaction are known as reactant. So here sodium and chlorine are reactants because they are taking part in reaction and is written on the left side of the arrow. And the new compound that is formed by the rearrangement of the element in a reaction is known as product and it is written on the right side of the arrow. So, thank you for watching.